All right, I guess we can start. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikolai Kondrashov, and I'm an well, open source developer. I work at Red Hat. I also do electronics and embedded as a hobby. And I'm a, oh, that font is wrong, maintainer of Digimon. But hope, let's hope this works. So we don't have any amplifications. I'll try to speak louder, OK. So I'm a maintainer of the Digimon project, which this presentation is all about. So generic tablets. What are generic tablets? What I mean by that? Basically, any graphics tablets which are not made by Wacom, because many think that Wacom is uh, the only the only manufacturer there is, which is not true. And uh, those generic tablets are mostly manufactured and built by original equipment manufacturers in Asia. Then they are rebranded and sold under many many different brands. And uh, this list here is maybe a half or a third of the names that you can find. So they can, they can be like very small, barely usable. I don't think anybody produces those small tablets anymore because uh, there are, well, you can't do much on them except sign something. There are tablets which are very visible on this screen, uh, which are very cheap and uh, you can do a lot with them. And they are very po popular. There are some curiosities which are experimental, or uh, they just made a single model and uh, didn't go anywhere from the same manufacturer like this Valtop series. I think you can only buy it in Japan these days. And it's curious because it has, uh, the pen has, has no battery and it has tilt detection, and I think it, they are licensing uh, the technology from back, back in. Uh, there are also huge, these uh, wireless tablets, for example. This one is not supported by Linux at the moment. And uh, there are even uh, tablet displays. This one is uh, 27 inches in diagonal and has tilt detection. I don't even know if Wacom produces anything that big, like any Cintiq or anything. And this costs like just a thousand dollars. So why 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 do these things? Why make drivers for them? And why care about them? If Wacom is usually better, so the reason is that plenty of people can't afford Wacom, especially people in poor countries, and uh, people who just try their hand or try to become an artist or just want to see what what it's all about and. See what's, what, what will happen. Uh, students, of course, in schools. But for me, it was, uh, yeah, and this, this, those are the same people who would run Linux instead of buying Windows and all the, and all the uh, graphics, graphical applications that go there. So for me, it was mostly for fun. So uh, the Digiment project was founded in 2008, and uh, it focuses on making the non-vacant graphics tablets work on Linux. And uh, that was mostly me, but there were people coming and going and staying for a short or a longer time. So the story is uh, a bit long one. So I got a present in uh, 2005 for my birthday, uh, and uh, whoever gave me that present checked with the shop assistant if that tablet works on Linux, and the shop assistant said it does, so they gave me that tablet, and obviously it didn't. So <laughs> I got curious, and I uh, browsed the internet a little bit, and I found somebody hacked a uh, Aptek driver to, to work with uh, Wizard Pen tablets, which are even older than mine, uh, from Genius. Uh, it was a student from Czech Republic, and I took a look at it, and I also hacked on it and tried to figure things out, and I made, made, made it work with my tablet and a bunch of others, which were very similar. And uh, me and him and a bunch of other people supported that driver for a while. So this was my tablet. 
Uh, but the thing was that uh, basically that driver tried to cope with the, with the garbage that kernel was sending for that tablet because kernel got confused by, the, um, by what the tablet told about itself. Uh, and th th this driver still exists and it's on, uh, I think it's an Ubuntu launch pad right now and people start, still try using it. And it still works with some tablets, but these days it wouldn't work with many new tablets very well, I think. So I thought perhaps fixing the kernel would be the right approach and I created this Digiment project on SourceForge. Then, <clears throat> so uh, looking at the kernel, I saw that the, um, and reading the, the heat spec, I saw that the um, that the kernel was uh, some drivers in the kernel was basically just fixing up a little bit the report descriptors, which are supposed to define in which way the tablets report the the events. So I thought perhaps I can just you know instead of fixing them up a little, just rewrite them. So. And I had to figure out how these report descriptors work, and there were basically no editors for those report descriptors. You had to craft them yourself or use the official report descriptor tool, which is uh, not that good and only works on, uh, and, and runs on Windows. It could work on Linux, but it wasn't that good and wasn't obvious. So by doing that tool, I learned a lot about report descriptors and was able to proceed. So I made also <coughs> a bunch of tools to dump the data from those tablets, and I started hacking on the kernel. So I didn't have the money to buy all those tablets, so I went around the computer shops in my city, and I asked if I can try them with my, table, with my <coughs> laptop. So I took some dumps, and I went, to ho went home, then made drivers, and came back and asked them to try again. <laughs> so I made a bunch of them working this way, and... Uh, <coughs> General advice on that thing, thing, just go into a big shop, like, uh, you know, Media Markt, actually went to a Media Markt, or, uh, you know, like, you know, br branch shops, like the French franchises. They don't usually care much. They say, like, I want to try this tablet, can I try? And they have them on display, like, lying there. So you just plug them in. Or you can do it with another device, like any, any input device, most likely. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, After this, I, well, I was publishing those kernel patches and saying that you can make them work this way. And I had to build my own kernels or like put the patches out because there was the only that way. So <clears throat> people started coming and asking if, they, if I can make other tablets work. And I talked to some people like over the, we exchanged emails and made them work. I sent them patches or upload the kernel somewhere and they would test it and then we would come back and then test it. It was obviously, Pretty tiring sometimes. I also wrote to the manufacturers of those, some of those, like the actual OEMs, and I got a response from Valtop, and they sent me three tablets. So I made drivers for those. Uh, <clears throat> in 2014, it became obvious that uh, SourceForge wasn't a very good place to host your open source project anymore, and they, their servers deteriorated and uh, <clears throat> was going down, so I moved to GitHub. And then a nice thing happened. The uh, kernel started supporting out of three heat tablets, uh, uh, drivers, pardon, and uh, asked for a little bit more support so that I can do my thing with them. So it became possible to make an out of three driver package, which I did, and got more tablets supported, and some people came and contributed. So by 2016, it became like, you know, same thing all over again, like, all those tablets are in some way the same, at least they look to me already. So I decided um, perhaps I should take a, my leave from it, and I wrote a bit of a post on the internet and said, like, okay, I'm stopping doing this, so if anybody wishes to step in and uh, take over, it would be nice and I can help you. So several people showed up and said, like, they are really interested and they would like to help, but I told them what they can start looking into, but. I haven't heard from them since. Maybe I, one person, insistent person, wrote to me several times, but then they eventually disappeared too. But at the same time, there were people coming like and contributing for their own tablets or just, just doing their thing. So in 2017, uh, one Japanese company wrote to me and said, like, you know, we are selling those 
cheap PCs with these cheap tablets running Linux to people who don't have much money in Japan, and we are really sad that you stopped doing this. Can you continue, and we'll uh, help you with the help of one of the OEMs. So I thought about it for a while and said, okay, we can think of something. And then later there was another company who needed a driver for a specific tablet for their product. So they also offered, like, they were also agreed to pay me money. And then I thought, well, having money for this work is nice. And, um, and I thought maybe I should promote it a little more. So I uh, put up Patreon and the people started coming and giving me some money. And here I am promoting my project. So, <clears throat> why don't these tablets work right away? So, first of all, <clears throat> most of the manufacturers, they care about Windows only, obviously, and Windows uh, generic human interface device driver doesn't work exactly like the one in Linux. Uh, and it's uh, not that good in some respects, I think. Uh, the human interface device specification is complex and vague, and it um, doesn't help very much people who just want to make a device or write drivers just like from nothing. And the OEMs have no time for that, especially those in Asia. They just want to push, push the devices and make them as, as good enough to be sold to Windows users. And there was also the, um, the idea in the Linux community that Wacom is the only graphics tablet there is. So uh, <clears throat> one of the main things that I noticed regarding the generic HID driver is that uh, those tables, they often have several report IDs in the report descriptor. And uh, for each report ID, they sometimes have similar devices reporting the same, the same data. And uh, Windows apparently has no problem with that. But Linux. Uh, tries to do its own thing, and it, uh, instead of reporting them with the same event code to the user space, they kind of see repeated usage in the report descriptor, and they say, well, we have to separate those, so let's just add some number to the event code, and let's report them with some weird event code, which doesn't make sense, but we'll get some data to the user space. That actually what let us in Wizard Pen Driver get that data, but on the other hand, perhaps you wouldn't need that with pen driver. Maybe it could be done some other way. Anyway, so to work around that, there is a quirk in the uh, generic hit driver, which is called hit quirk mouse input, which uh, basically creates an event device for each of the report descriptors, in, uh, for each of the report IDs in the report descriptor. And the many devices require that fix, and some of those, some of the devices were fixed by just adding that quirk to the kernel. <clears throat> so what I noticed in the report descriptors of some of those tablets as they became bigger and bigger and they gained resolution is that the manufacturers started limiting the, the, ex the logical extents to 16-bit signed integer. So they don't go higher than 32K. And that was repeated ac across several models. So I suspect there is some problem with the default, the, with the generic HID driver in Windows, which prevents them from using 32 bits integers, which are, you can do that in the report descriptor. <coughs> and uh, if you want to have a higher resolution, you will have to, therefore, write a custom driver, because the generic HID driver cannot handle that apparently. So then there's the human interface device specification, and it's 97 pages of uh, description of the report descriptor language, which allows you to specify which bits will mean this or that, and how to parse that data. It is rather vague, again, and it's um, you should know how to use it before you can, uh, you can do something with it. You should know what you want to say, rather. And that's why there are 767 pages describing how to just define specific devices like uh, uh, CRT monitor controls, or uh, joysticks, or mice, 
or uh, I don't know medical devices or keypads or and everything everything for each of those there is a few pages or a document describing how you should write use that language to describe that device and what these particular bits will mean so eight of those pages define uh, digitizers or graphics tablets which is not much if you consider that three of them are examples of report descriptors <coughs> And it looks like um, the uh, USB implementer forum is not working here very well, and it looks like the designers of those drivers or devices, they first make a driver, then a device, and then just describe it and submit that document from implementer forum so that they can get a certification back. And they pay, they pay for that, so it's hard to, to argue with them from the perspective of the implementers forum, but it's just my guess. I'm not, I'm not a member of you know, USB implementers forum. So <clears throat> the official report descriptor tool that the uh, USB.org has runs on Windows, as I said before, and it's, uh, uh, it is confusing to use. It doesn't work very well, and uh, there is at least one case where it misinterprets the specification and it, uh, you know, stores the unit exponent incorrectly and uh, as a result many devices store it incorrectly in their report descriptors and now this is a standard de facto which differs from actual specification. Uh, so since the USB implementers forum is a consortium of uh, manufacturers of devices and they are all paying members and they pat each other on the back to certify those devices Users don't win from that, and implementers like the third-party implementers of the drivers have a hard time. So, oh boy, yeah. So these Asian original equipment manufacturers, they, um, they have a hard time following all that, and uh, they don't. So, <clears throat> so as I said already, the repeated usages in the same report descriptor and the different report IDs is what causing the problem for Linux. Then uh, it's not clear from this, this HID specification how you should report those buttons on the pen. There is an example with just, I think, one button on the pen, but if you have two, uh, you don't know what to do. And all those tablet manufacturers, they just try to emulate the mouse, so they have two buttons on the pen. And one company tries to report it this way, another one that way, which doesn't work very well. Uh, then uh, buttons on the frame of the tablet, they are reported usually as a general purpose keyboard, and then you press a button, the device generates a scan code for the keyboard that like, says like, undo is control Z, and uh, zoom in works in Photoshop for this key, and doesn't work on some other one, and uh, change brush is the special key combination in Photoshop again, or in some other application. <coughs> That's all in the default mode without initializing tablets, but this is what, what they do. And they, because of the missing, because they don't understand the specification very well, because of the, you know, the official report descriptor tool being a little broken, they are like fun stuff like the coordinates being reported in cubic terra inches in the pen, so yeah. It basically says in the report descriptor, cubic terra inches. Tens of cubic terra inches, but the tens of cubic terra inches, that comes from the report descriptor tool, and cubic inches is basically, they thought maybe that makes sense, I don't know. I think they tried to scale the unit somehow, and eh, something worked. And, uh, but then some people just give up, and they say, oh, I don't care about report descriptor, just stuff it with, you know, uh, Vendor usages, vendor stuff, and everything that you don't, just don't make sense to HID driver at all. And then, yeah, there's some more. Uh, so tablets in the default mode, when you plug your tablet in, they become like crippled and or useless because they require initialization to get the full resolution, to get the buttons uh, reported not as you know scan codes but as generic buttons. And uh, you can, like, some, some of those manufacturers, they use some sane methods, like send a feature report, that at least something, something that would, would be according to HID specification. But some others, like UC Logic, they 
you have to request a string descriptor, and, they, and in response you get binary data instead of a string, and in that bin binary data you have the table at the logical extents, resolution, number of buttons, and all that stuff, and you can request other string descriptors and you get model numbers and something like that. And uh, also when you get the report descriptor with the parameters, you somehow enable the tablet in the full, fully functional mode. And after you, some of those tables, after you initialize them, they start reporting the full data and everything, but it is no longer in the format which would be suitable for describing with the report descriptor, so it's not, a lo not any longer according to HID specification. <coughs> so the mentality of Wacom is the only graphics table, at least to people not testing any other tablets, and uh, I've seen applications, toolkits, and drivers getting broken over time in various aspects with those tablets. Uh, and the tablet, like which has tilt detection, uh, basically the stack. What, when I got the first one, the input stack wasn't prepared for anything except Wacom, and uh, the whole stack didn't actually care about what those numbers were regarding tilt, and they just somehow adjusted their applications and everything. And when I asked around, uh, what does that mean? And everybody said, well, I don't know, maybe angle, maybe something, and actually tried to measure input from one of the Wacom tablets, and uh, it was interesting because there was some, certainly some processing done somewhere on the way in the Wacom stack, and uh, I had to adjust the uh, input from that one tablet which reported sealed to look like Wacom so that it would work. Uh, then there is this GNOME uh, Wacom tablet configuration tool, and already by the name you know where that is going. Uh, there is no uh, generic, you know, like just a tablet configuration tool which is any good, only Wacom. And uh, another problem with it is that it uses Live Wacom, which doesn't want to work with tablets that just come like through the door and say, hi, I'm the new tablet. You have to add an entry to the library database so that it would uh, recognize the tablet and allow you to configure it. Even, even if you use the Wacom driver on top of the kernel driver, like the Wacom XORG driver, it will still say, I don't know anything, there is no tablet connected. But you can configure that tablet then using the command line tool, which is not convenient for everyone. <laughs> so if you work on any of those, on a driver or on an application or on a toolkit, get a couple of those tablets and just keep them around and test from time to time, it will help. <coughs> So we have the um, out of three driver package, which is called Digiman kernel drivers, and uh, <coughs> it's very nice to have that because it's much easier to get it to users, and for users it's much easier to install it than a full kernel or patches to the kernel. And it's faster to develop, and it's also easier for like people who never coded for kernel just get it and start hacking at it and just say make and make install and then you can play. Uh, it is a bit of a hassle to sync with upstream because some parts have to be different. S and uh, <coughs> we only keep modules which we need there, which we have newer drivers for, and uh, we try to keep all the difference minimal. Although when you need to do like some kind of refactoring, that becomes hairy, which is the case right now. Uh, we have to copy some private definitions from the kernel and add some compatibility macros, but otherwise it's possible and in general very nice to users and developers. There is one, one thing, uh, one trick to it, in that <coughs> if, the, if, uh, your, uh, if your custom driver that is out of three already has a uh, custom driver in the stock kernel, then you can just use mod probe to override it and say, like, take prefer the driver from the extra directory, the or out of tree driver, uh, then it works fine. And, but otherwise, the generic HID driver has a list of those vendor and product IDs which have a custom driver. And if your tablet is not there, then uh, the generic driver never lets go and just says like, okay, I'll be handling it then since there are no custom drivers. So we have a, couple, a bunch of UDEV rules in the script which uh, checks if there is a 
out of three driver installed, which handles those tables and then rebinds it using the CFS. So, make them work. I obviously cannot describe all the ways which you can go to make your tablet work or somebody else's tablet work, but this is uh, one general way which might work in many cases. So first of all, you have to find out your device parameters, what it can do, what it can report. Then you have to figure out if there is any initialization necessary, and then go back maybe one step and then repeat. Uh, then you, I would recommend going with writing report descriptor instead of uh, creating all the event codes for yourself and the driver. And uh, you might need to tweak some input bits so that where they would fit the report descriptor better and the and the, and the kernel events, tidy up event devices and contribute. So here's in, in detail. So. <coughs> To find out device parameters, you can just uh, dump the reports that the tablet sends and see what the, what the possibilities are, what happens when you press this button or that button and move your pen this way or that way or press it and everything. That's very, uh, you know, uh, interactive and helps a lot. Uh, this way you can find the maximum and minimum coordinates and the, uh, the pressure range and the tilt if, it, if your tablet has it. Uh, if you if this table will require initialization, then you might have problems like your resolution will be limited and your range that you find this way will be different. Then you need to do initialization and then check it again. And then also read the, the seller or manufacturer specs because they might sometimes be different uh, with what you see because you haven't initialized it or missed something. But they can sometimes be different because manufacturer is, uh, you know, a little line, a little bit, like with the pressure, resolution, and uh, sometimes, or some things happens. Uh, and then you will need also to find the draw drawing area size so that you can derive the resolution from that. The physical resolution, how many lines. So here's an example of the uh, dump made with USB heat dump uh, on the... Um, for a Heon tablet in default mode, as is, you would plug, plug it in without a driver. And you can see that the pen events are reported with report ID 9. Uh, and there, is, there are buttons reported, it's like this one here, if you can see. One here is basically meaning that it's, uh, the pen tip is on the tablet and touching and pressing. But there is no proximity bit. The tablet basically doesn't save and pen enters the, uh, comes close to the tablet and uh, the tablet can start reporting uh, valid data. And that is important for many drivers right now. Earlier, the, dr the, the graphics stack and the whole, like the whole input stack used to work with just the tablets without proximity reports, but nowadays I hear reports that it doesn't work anymore. <coughs> uh, okay, something got messed up here. But okay, so you can see there are X coordinates, Y coordinates, and the pressure, that is pretty easy. But you have to remember that this is all little ending, so the lowest byte come first. So for, if your tablet already reports everything you need, you, don't, you might not need to do any initialization, and uh, you just need to check if you have the resolution and frame controls reported the way you want them to make your driver. But if not, many tablets nowadays are made using UC Logic chipsets, and it's a good bet to try the UC Logic probe tool from from our GitHub organization. And if it gives you any uh, you know meaningful results, and if you see that the reports change after you run this tool, that means you're in luck. And uh, if that doesn't happen, you can try the Valtip and Kai methods, which I haven't seen quite a while, so probably they are not used anymore by anybody. Uh, otherwise, you will have to see the USB traffic from the Windows driver and try to figure out what's going on, how, what of those uh, requests uh, initializing the table. So after initialization, 
it's looking a bit better. After initialization, uh, you might see completely different, well, slightly different picture in this case. You see, for example, for, the, for uh, another Heon tablet, but it's similar for many of them, you see that the port ID has changed. You see that, the, well, the coordinates can get another, another extent, extents, like go higher. And uh, <clears throat> you can see in this case that there now is a proximity report here when the pen goes out of proximity. So th this here, the person lifted the pen, so this button got released, but then they removed it from the, from the tablet completely and this changed. But in this case, the proximity bit goes one when you remove the pen. So it's kind of inverted. Uh, and it's, uh, I think it's against what the HID specs describe. So next, I would suggest if, if, if UsoLogic probe worked, then uh, quite likely you will not need to write any report descriptors because in the current driver, we generate our own report descriptors based on the um, parameters that you retrieved from the tablet. You will just need to add your um, tablet to the list of the, um, the proper place in the big case statement. Uh, otherwise, you will probably need to learn a little bit about report descriptor language and uh, read the spec and also look at the report descriptors that we have in our tablet database uh, repository and uh, look at them in the kernel as well. So they will give you some idea what you can write there. Uh, you can use uh, either D, convert, or some similar tool, of which there are many now, to make your own report descriptor, and then you can use the report fix up handler in the kernel driver to fit that report descriptor to the generic hit driver. So you can go from the <coughs> report descriptor which you got from the tablet and dump it with a USB hit dump, or you can get that from the sys kernel debug tree for hit devices as well. Uh, this, if you're using HeatRG Convert, you can convert it to XML. Sorry about that. But it's uh, currently the one two-way format that HeatRG supports. Then you edit the report descriptor the way you need it to work and convert it to code and paste that into your C file. <coughs> so uh, sometimes you might need to... <coughs> tweak the input bits. Uh, for example, uh, some tables can report garbage when you remove the pen from the surface far enough or for the pressure fields or some of the tables can re start reporting the data in the way which is incompatible with HID specification and you can't, can't write a report descriptor for that. So one way that we did before was to create an extra report descriptor and then change the report ID on the fly so that kernel thinks that there is a separate report ID and we and then we can write a separate piece of report descriptor for that. Or if in the case of Valtop series we needed to translate the uh, tilt reports and that's where you can do it. Or uh, like invert that in range bit that we just saw. So uh, <clears throat> it would be nice to users if you could, uh, for example, mask out the interfaces that don't produce anything. Some, some tables have like two or three interfaces, but actually use only one or two. Maybe those other interfaces are for something else, which we didn't figure out. Uh, but then uh, if you leave them be, they will create an input device which never produces anything, and then users get confused. So if you return in a dev for those devices in the probe handler, then uh, that device will not appear. Then you can uh, modify device names, event device names in the input configured handler, which we do for uh, UC logic tablets so that your device names will correspond to what they represent like here. So it can look like this. So user opens GIMP or any other application and he sees a bunch of input devices named like this. And which of those will be pen? You don't know, they'll have to go through and click all of them and figure out uh, which one will work. And then some of the uh, 
some of the applications got confused. They tried to match the device by name. I think it was at some point. So if you mask some of them out and then uh, use that handler to add a little bit of clarification to the device, that would be of much help. <coughs> so you can contribute to the command kernel drivers when you make your tablet work. And this way you get feedback faster and get your get to users faster and will generally be able to make your driver faster. You can contribute to the kernel directly, of course, but in either case, you will need to follow kernel coding style and uh, keep changes and commits nice and clear and logically separate. So, and there are those uh, little thingies on the tablet and I had users ask me many times, uh, these don't work or how do I make them work? So normally those are not actual buttons there. It's just an area on the tablet which the Windows driver sometimes can handle and uh, like emulate shortcuts in Windows to make that work or let you assign some shortcuts to that. I think they are genuinely useless because you cannot feel them on the surface of the tablet compared to those actual buttons there. So you can, you'd have to look on the tablet and then look on the screen and on the tablet to see what's going on. So don't bother about those sorts of just gimmicks that manufacturers put like to, to sell more tablets. So that's all, I think, except if you really want to, you can become my Patreon supporter and get those nice stickers here right away. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Do you, still, do you actually have time to use those tablets by yourself, or is it only coding uh, to make them work? No, I used my tablet uh, several times after I made the driver work, and I tried to draw, but I'm not a professional artist or anything. So I found, found making drivers more interesting. Yes? Can you just go out and buy drivers what fraction of things actually work at the moment? I guess you've got a list, presumably, so we can check first and then buy stuff that works. Yeah, there is, the, uh, there is the, uh, this website here uh, where there is a little database of tablets which are supported and with versions of uh, our drivers and the upstream kernel which support them. So that might help. In general, yeah, there's also like uh, some things that the manufacturers do be careful about that. For example, change the they, they change the inside sometimes, and so they don't change the name. Or they might change the name, but slightly. Like uh, Huion recently released a new line of tablets which changed the protocol quite, quite uh, in a quite a noticeable way and the initialization sequence. So, and they added to the names like PLUS or 2048 or something like that, otherwise leaving the name the same and lots of people got confused and there is uh, there's work that needs to be done and people come and ask for those tables to work all the time anybody else yes I think that by the time I started these uh, other tables were already quite dead so I had a few people come and ask me about serial tablets when I started, but afterwards nobody came. So I, I got I, one in my loft. I never managed to make it work. Mm. And I think the the digitizers on uh, the convertible laptops are also often uh, serial devices, but maybe don't maybe don't always uh, wake them. I don't know. Mm. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, there, there are plenty of interfaces. There are interfaces in, uh, in the toolkits, like in GNOME and in Qt, for that, which you can use. I have not never used them. Well, I had time to look at them when something broke, but it was quite a while since something broke in a toolkit, so I don't remember how they work. Uh, you can talk to the uh, Xorg directly, for example. I don't know. There should be some... Uh, APIs to do that. 
Yes? Do the tablets position sensing without actually touching, or does some of them only work when you touch them? Because I've seen you, you can kind of hover over the top when the cursor moves, yeah. and then you press, but they all do that, right? The, the most, most tablets detect the pen when you hover and uh, you don't, don't touch that <coughs> to move the cursor. And some, some drivers, like the lib input driver, for example, recent, recently at least added a filtering of very slight touch and it doesn't register. If you touch the, touch the surface a little, it doesn't register a button click. So you can kind of drag it a little bit and then press harder to make it work. Anybody else? Okay, thanks everyone. <laughs>